what's this, you know, eureka moment that we got it, we have it. Archaeologist Dr. Julie Shablitsky describes what it was like to locate an important piece of history, the childhood home of Harriet Tubman. Specifically, her team found the remains of the cabin of Tubman's father, Ben Ross. The recent discovery comes after months of searching, digging, and sifting in a swamp on the eastern shore of Maryland. Dr. Shablitsky was excited to share her discovery with the world and with some individuals in particular. What's most important and what's most moving to me is to be able to share this with people like the descendants of Harriet Tubman and Ben Ross. I am a great, great, great grandniece of Harriet Ross Tubman as well as the great, 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 great granddaughter of Ben Ross Sr. Tina Martin Wyatt is an artist and educator who now lives in Washington, D.C. She grew up in New York State, near where Tubman eventually settled. My grandmother, she would say periodically, well, let's go visit Aunt Harriet. But then I found out, you know, later that she did know her because, you know, Aunt Harriet took care of her. So she knew her personally. She talked about her, but it wasn't in the way that you all know her, you know, this you know, and that you're putting her, you know, she's an icon and things like that. We knew her just as, you know, Aunt Harriet, member of the family, did something nice for people, you know, and, uh, and that's how we knew her. I came down from one of Harriet's four brothers, that brother confusingly also being named Ben Ross. Douglas Mitchell is a retired airline pilot in Seattle, Washington. Honestly, uh, the Harriet Tubman lineage did not come up often in conversation. It was only very briefly mentioned. But as he got older, Douglas became more interested in his legendary family member and began connecting with other people in the Tubman Ross family tree. I've been able to track down a few family members that are living in various parts of the country and make contact with them. Dr. Shablitsky made sure to keep in touch with Tina and Douglas as her dig progressed. When I was excavating in the soil and we were pulling up those artifacts, I quickly took out my phone, took a picture and texted it to all of them so that they could be there looking over my shoulder as things were coming out of the ground. As she texted us, she was telling us what, she, what they were doing and she was also showing us the images as she was getting them. She was sharing her updates with photos and with some text messages saying, this is what we're doing. You know, she really brought it close to us, you know, as if we were right there. This is what we're looking at. Very, very nice updates. The dig is helping the family to learn more about their ancestors. We have this great opportunity to go into the soil and to resurrect the story from these bits of broken things they left behind. Each piece of ceramic, each broken shirt, gets us close to, to building a story and a vignette of what life was like here in this marsh area and where, where Harriet Tubman lived and, and where Ben Ross also lived and worked. It certainly adds depth and dimension to our family story. Oh, it, it, was, it was wonderful to actually see his things that he used, remnants of artifacts that he used on a daily basis, humanized him more for me. Personal items, people didn't have a lot back then when they were enslaved, and so sometimes the only thing you find are going to be a button or a shoe buckle or something clothing related. Because in African-American families, you didn't have many things from back then to hand down to your children, which will tell them this is what we used and, and how it looked. When we're in the ground, we're beginning to pull these artifacts out of the soil. It's a powerful moment because when you pick out a pipe stem, you think to yourself, I'm the first person to touch this in almost 200 years. And this may have been smoked by Ben Ross or Harriet Tubman even. And the project also speaks to the horrors of slavery. Their days in slavery, their escape from slavery, their life living on the plantations, or in Ben's case, just off the plantation. I can only imagine that it must have been very, very, very difficult. It was difficult. And Harriet talks a lot about life for her. She spent a lot of her time um, outdoors in the marshes um, when she was younger and even got sick because of it. I can only imagine, and I often have, that it just must have been terribly, terribly, terribly difficult to have been a slave. 
and, and to have been afraid of being sold off to a new owner, to take the beatings you take. Many of us uh, will come home from work and, and uh, maybe have uh, complaints about our day when in uh, retrospect, relative to others like Harriet Tubman, our life is a cakewalk. This discovery acts as a wonderful kind of bridge, spans the ages, bringing together multiple generations of the Ross family members. Many of us would never have met before and have not met before and doubtlessly never would have if it hadn't been for this. This is something that Harriet Tubman herself would have been very, very, very happy about because Harriet actually lost touch with a few of her own family members back in her day. The quest to learn even more from the site is a race against time and climate change. We want to know more. We want to see what else is left in that space. Also, we have a problem because the sea level rise is causing the regular inundation of this site. So we don't have a lot of time left to be able to rescue this story from this wetland. For Douglas, finding Ben Ross's home serves as a powerful reminder to do one thing. Remember. Remember. This is a one word answer, remember. To learn, to grow, to understand, to comprehend, to connect with both the past and those who have passed on, such as Harriet and her father, and to connect with those still alive. What you don't remember may as well not exist. So the answer is remember. This is Inside Edition Digital.